So I, I'm glad you're focusing on this piece because this relates to several other pieces that were in the sight line here. So right. let's just begin here. So timeline piece, it's, uh, it's very geological and you're looking sort of at the earth and it's sort of has a, a very foundational aspect to this next piece we're gonna go to, uh, the fifth world. So go ahead and kind of break this down a little bit for people. I mean, it's extremely attractive, but there's a lot of very specific things happening in this. Yeah, like I said, it's uh, kind of relating to the idea of a timeline of the Mother Earth, um, the texture relating to kind of the cliffs, or either it could even be the passing clouds and playing with light and shadow, mm. but relating to, you know, the horizon line, um, looking at it in a geological perspective, this is a Texas shell here, so it has uh, it's an OC bed floor, so it has almost all those elements of those uh, kind of almost fossil-like uh, Oh, I hadn't things. thought about that. That's actually uh, yeah, a very important point with that. Um, and for people can see the larger images on the website, or, and, you can, uh, and we can post others. But yeah, these are shells. Right. And so that's shells. a very good point about the ocean. Uh, it yeah. sort of fulfills a couple of things. Um, but point out also that vertical line, uh, which I didn't very, realize until this morning. Yeah, that was very subtle kind of uh, textured vertical line, and it's relating to our Hopi mythology and how we believe we emerged into this fourth world from an underworld, and it's, um, it relates to what we call Sipapu or Sipapuni. Um, and so that's what that, and that connection that we have to Mother Earth and, re, and living in relationship to it, respecting it, and that kind of thing as well. Um, and then it's the idea, and that's why I combined very different, various different types of wood so that it, it's creating that idea of, um, from different regions, um, creating diversity. that, har that mm -hmm. diversity and that harmony. Um, and so that's what that relates to. Yeah, because the imagery for people who can't see this side of it is different on this side. I mean, it's related, um, but uh, on this side, it's more um, straight lines across the, the wood elements. Um, or routered, and you have right. you know, horizon lines, but it's not doesn't have that broken element there, um, which becomes really important then when we talk about like this piece. Mm -hmm. um, and the title of this one is Fifth, uh, fifth World. Fifth, fifth World. And so this relates to um, again the culture of our Hopi culture in the Fifth World, and the kind of relating to our prophecies and things of that nature. Um, uh, but it also relates to the idea, this piece is completely interactive, so you can separate these pieces. Um, it's inviting, a way of inviting the viewer or collector to be involved so that you can, um, it almost creates a conversation between myself and the viewer as well. Mm -hmm. But what it relates to is the idea of how we're all connected as uh, humanity in some, in some way, no matter what culture we come from. We all have our own beliefs, we have our own uh, culture, ideas, and so forth, and so that's why each one of these is slightly moving in its own direction. Um, yeah, and if uh, Yao from this angle, I don't know if you can see it or not, but um, it, it is really beautiful the way it's done, but you know, some can't out and, some, and, if, and forward, some back, and there are also some variations in the widths, and, right. uh, but they're all sort of at the same uh, level up here. Yeah. So yeah. it's designed to where it, the texture inside, it's kind of a control break technique that I use to where the texture will lock everything back together. Yes. And it's designed so everything is balanced, so you can actually stack this vertically if you wanted to. Um, but relating to the fifth world in our culture, so that's why this one is uh, slightly narrow, a little darker, and it's relating to where we are um, as humanity right now. And it kind of relates to the idea of whatever choices we make, what we uh, as we pass on where we may end up or just what we are doing right now in our lives and what choices we make and where we might end up. And so it's, just, it's basically just so, you know, thinking about what choices we want to make, uh, ideas mm -hmm. and things and so forth. And so that's what it really relates to. And so this element here, this narrower element, relates then to the element in... Um, that connection, yeah. The connection in the... Um, timeline piece. Mm -hmm. So that's why these two, it's fascinating, the relationship and but the aesthetic and formally they couldn't be any more different but uh, looking. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting again how I think the um, your, your sensitivity to the, the stories and, and as you say the mythologies um, 
the way you, you kind of carry that through, and then these, these actually not only have a dialogue between you and the viewer, but between each other. Right. You know, and that's what's sort of interesting. <laughs> but yet you do it with this diversity of uh, formal approaches and, and materials. And so, but, but the stories, and again, again, it ties in nicely with your whole thought around, which I never really fully appreciated until we started interacting a lot more, sort of more professionally. Um, not that we were unprofessional before, but, <laughs> but um, is the, um, how dialogue and discourse seems so important to you and how your work actually is so sensitive to the fact of your diversity is within the Hopi culture in, in the mythologies and what it embraces, but it almost becomes a metaphor for sort of just contemporary life and the realization that we're all living in now, which is, you know, our need to, to appreciate and, and sort of value the differences and, or at least just accept the differences between different peoples and different cultures. Right. So that's why I think it's kind of important that you touched on the, the mythologies and Hopi um, do look at a sort of global mankind, it sounds For like. For sure, yeah, because our ceremonies, that's what they, they tie into. Um, during these actual ceremonies, if you understand the language and what they're talking about during some of these things, is they're really speaking about the good of all mankind and all as a whole, as an in general. And so it kind of always just really relates to all of that as uh, as a, a whole, as you know, humanity, and then the respect for the earth and things of that nature. So in the fifth um, world, then, mm -hmm. uh, so the this is represents sort of where we are now mm -hmm. and just sort of mankind today but that must then uh, i'm just trying to sort of break it down a bit then so i first of all so i understand it and can explain <laughs> it um so then the the fifth world is really this um sort of amalgamation of of all the choices and things that have happened and sort of what where things may be going correct right. so the that's rooted then in these things then that are more foundational. So there's the earth, obviously, and then um, what are the other sort of key elements that, that, that um, you know me, I'm, I'm trying to get to five. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've got two. I'm to, <laughs> so I'm, well, the uh, idea of, you know, how you treat each other, <laughs> relationships, things right. like that. Um, uh, we have to pay attention to the environment and there's, there's all those different factors that come into, into play. And so there's, uh, there's all these different factors that, you know, globally that we should, these issues and things of that nature. Okay, so, so when you talk about the five elements, then the three are the are sort of pillars and they can represent a lot of different things that are sort of the givens. Yeah. All right, and then this is sort of where we are today with what the choices and, and roads we've taken. This represents what could be. What could be. So best be knowledgeable of what your choices are. <laughs> so, um, so do you want me to just pull this out since so that he can see in the camera how this, when sure, we talk about, do that. Yeah. these really, they're, not, they're literally, none of these things, which is fascinating about this work, none of it's screwed together, glued together, pasted together. Um, these things just fit together. And that's what's really very interesting about them. And so, I don't know what your process is, but obviously you make it very smooth on the outside. And, or you know as much as you can and then these things must still be connected somehow and and there's this break mm -hmm. but yet they perfectly fit this is sort of cut in and this one out here bulges out and it's fascinating when you put them together and each one of these is like that they just sort of lock in and it's very stable and heavy <laughs> <laughs> not super heavy but it's but you know it's these really have some you know are very substantial this is indiana limestone indiana by the way. Limestone. i forgot to mention yep. that um, which is nice because it, it's sort of a, a blank slate, um, you know, as opposed to the shell stone, right. which is, has lots of imagery in it. Right. This is sort of just clean right. and sort of grays and ivories, and this is a little topi. Um, which it's interesting that, you, and you've used this, uh, we're not getting a full panoramic shot here, but there's a lot of other pieces like this piece. I don't want to move to this one just yet, but just letting, in terms of the materials, this one does have a lot more um, 
marbling is a bad word to use because it's a whole other material, but <laughs> you know, it's, there's right. more swirls and texture in this one, it, right. less so. So it's quite diverse, but it's clean and it's elegant. And so uh, it, it, it's a good choice when you want to do these things that have sort of a contemporary, more abstract appearance, but yet it's sort of rooted in this content. Right. And that's what I, I like about this work. Yeah, and this stone is, it's, I, I really liked it because it just has a lot of integrity to it, so I can really manipulate and uh, control that break more and more. I can do it with various different types of stone, but this is really relates well to that particular process. It's probably nice and dense to, it is, to yeah. work with, as opposed to this other one, like you said last night, has air pockets and things in it. Because I, I, yeah, I've yeah. been able to do that and this particular process with yeah. that, it's, but it's definitely uh, a lot more challenging. Yeah, uh, and that um, shell stone is much lighter. It's got a lot of air in it, apparently. Mm -hmm. It's very light. Um, so I, I want to move then, just keeping with the thread of sort of this interconnection in terms of the you know, culture mm -hmm. and, and mythologies. So this one is, a, and also it's a totally different material. So this one's all wood, and um, it's a very famous place in New Mexico. This is Chaco, represent, well the title's Chaco Canyon. Right. And so it's representing Chaco Canyon. Uh, but there's a whole lot of stuff in uh, Chaco Canyon beyond just the visual in terms of Hopi uh, culture and, and, uh, and, well, actually a lot of other cultures too. Right. It's, uh, it, why don't you describe Chaco Canyon because it's, it's massive and it's, it's very beautiful. Yeah, Chaco Canyon is a very special location in uh, New Mexico, but it's, um, has very, uh, it's basically where our, our culture comes from in that region. Um, they were, had settled there. Uh, but structurally, is it, is it a series of cliffs or? Uh, there's uh, dwellings that have been there that were built um, and it relates to the idea of, can, it, it's, so, it, it's such a unique location, it relates to the cosmos and the lines that the lights will pass through these windows that have a sun dagger there. So it relates to um, the solstice and things of that nature, equinox and things But it's like all that. stone. It, it's a it's, yeah, stone it's structures, like, it's a mountain, and so yeah. that's what I wanted to kind of element, uh, kind of emulate that with the the woodwork on that particular piece, uh, working with that texture because there's all these slats of the stonework that's mm -hmm. in that uh, particular location, and then I have to have, of course, that window in the center there to relate to that idea of what that place means. And um, it's very was it important. Was actually considered a pueblo at one point? It was. It was. Uh, that's where it was okay. a big uh, settlement and location, and so. The people from that particular area, that's where the Tewa people, the uh, Hopis, uh, we actually, uh, we look back to and we, we still sing about in a lot of our ceremonies. So for the Tewa, Chaco is actually sort of like the origin. Right. Yeah. So it's that whole area. Is and it's like a bowl. It's a natural vortex, correct? Yeah. Well, it's, yes. There's a whole location out there and it's a big, uh, it's massive. There's a lot of uh, settlement there and so you'll see all the... Uh, ceremonial chambers and the living areas and things of that nature that was uh, and still it's not has a, it's not as like Grand Canyon of course no but it has that vibe it's it's really big rock struck uh, mountain structure correct or uh, no it's actually kind of this there's some cliffs and things around it but there yeah. is all the dwellings but it's were, natural uh, like stone and massive formation that happens to be sort of this bowl shape, because, probably because of the natural vortex and the wind. Uh, well, the area, probably so, but there's yeah. the dwellings that you see that were definitely constructed and, and built there, and that uh, right. the settlement that was there, and so, uh, and the people that were uh, res residing there and living there and practicing ceremonies there, and so we have strong ties to that particular area. But what's interesting is you really have emulated, when you go to Chaco Canyon, that's what you're sort of struck with is this incredible texture right. of the walls and, and is probably, I'm surmising, from, because it's a natural vortex, meaning the wind swirls, and we have a lot of places like that in New Mexico because of the wind and all the sand, but it, um, it's like it's chipped away at this stone and created this incredible texture. And You've just happened to do it horizontally, I mean vertically and, and horizontally. Yeah, well that also it, relates to kind of our, uh, just the traditions and ceremonial things, uh, things that we respect and so it relates to almost the four cardinal directions northeast south and west right. and things of that nature um, and the idea of and the, then creating this natural window right that's there because that's a, another fascinating thing though as you said is the 
and, and people are continue to study this place and, and how it's been, you know, utilized and just the whole, and you know, the cosm I just said the cosmology of it because of the angles of the sun and the moon and how they hit. And then of course, as the, the movement of time, all those shadows and everything changes and, Correct. and, and moves. But uh, so it's, it's, it's always been a very spiritual sort of place. It seems like for a lot of people beyond even just the Hopi, um, there's just something about natural formations like this. And um, so that's, so I wondered about that. And you just answered that question. So the four again, comes back to this constant of four right. in terms of four seasons and four directions and- uh, Yeah, that's and, very important in our, right. in our culture. It's uh, oh, that symbolism. And so I tend to incorporate all the symbolism, but very in a very subtle way but those elements are still there just growing up with the traditions and so that I think it's the foundation of uh, uh, really kind of how it's always been the foundation of my work. 